through the via, uh, you know, mechanism of all the Torah mitzvahs. So it just made me even more excited for that day. And I was reading in, in the book from Exile to Redemption, and I just want to quote it because it's just so beautifully stated. It says here um, that the coming of Mashiach is the core of, of everything, um, the goal to which all else leads. So long as Mashiach has not yet come, the intent of creation has not been realized. And the universe has not fulfilled its destiny. So it's really all about that culmination of everything we've done down here to like bring to actual reality and the destiny, um, uh, you know, of the purpose of us being here on this earth. And um, so the more we learn about this, Bezrat Hashem, we're going to bring it closer to our life today and um, for the world at large. So um, we were also learning that, um, you know, the Torah speaks of the, the prophecy of Bilam, and we were learning how the Mashiach's role will be the successor to David Amalek. Well, when you think about that and you think about the time of David and Malachi, it seems like really great, but, but like you think, oh, we're just going back in time. Like, aren't we like yearning and learn, you know, for, for something more than that? And so the Rebbe is going to go through the process of looking at the, the, the uh, structure of these incredible teachings from the Rambam um, and to show us that um, it's, it's, it's way more than that. And so we have a lot to look forward to. Um, definitely during the time of King Mashiach, uh, of David Amela, um, you know, we're gonna get back to that rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdash and we're definitely gonna have stability and security uh, that will allow us to be free, fully free to do Torah and mitzvahs. But, Still, there's like this question, are we waiting thousands of years to just return to David HaMelech's days um, as great as it was? Well, first of all, um, not everyone like connected to Hashem. And actually there was a lot of uh, Goyim that secretly detested us and attacked us, you know, whenever they could. So, um, and, and eventually they uprooted us from our land. Uh, so we have to like really think that for sure Mashiach is going to be better than that. Uh, definitely there'll be achievements and transformations that beyond the status quo of what was during David and Malik's time. Um, it, it, you know, you can imagine if just the end game of creation uh, for the entire world to acknowledge Hashem as creator, um, like we wouldn't want it with battle. We wouldn't want it with strife. We wouldn't want it with, you know, but what's going to happen is it's going to be like in such a way of willingness, a, such a way of yearning and longing by them because Hashem will help all the world open their eyes um, to see godliness and the greatness of Hashem. Um, so... So for sure, you know, Mashiach's coming is going to leave no stone unturned. Like, you know, there will be no soul unmoved. And um, so let's dive in and see what is it in Bilaam's prophecy that will compare um, the different time periods of David and Melech with the future Mashiach and how we can see that we're progressing by leaps and bounds. And it's not going to be, oh, just like the David of Malik's time. Um, so the Pasuk is in English, and this is Bilam from, um, I see, I see it, but not now. I behold it, but not soon. A star has gone forth from Yaakov and a staff will arise from Israel, crushing Moab's princesses and uprooting all of his descendants. Adam will be possessed and Sarah will be inherited by his enemies and Israel will triumph. So this one little paragraph, actually, this prophecy is from Bilam, as it's discussing the future event, um, has, as the Rambam teaches us, implications of 
more than the eye sees. Um, Cause Bilam delves into things that are differentiating between Dava Melch's time and the ultimate Mashiach's time. And Rambam delves into these words and explains that Bilam discusses these two different epics. The epic of David and Melch, and as we said, Mashiach. So let's break it down into these four statements. As you see in this sheet, whoever did not uh, get it last time, you could uh, contact us and we will have it sent to you by email. There's Dr. Shem, you could see it for yourself in black and white. Uh, so the first sentence is, I see it, but not now. This actually refers to David Amalek. I behold it, but not in the near future. That is in reference to Mashiach. The next sentence of this paragraph, I, um, it stated, a star will go forth from Yaakov, which refers to David Amalek, and a staff will arise from Israel. This refers to Mashiach. Crushing all of Moabite's princesses, this refers to David Amalek, as the Torah states, he smote Moab and measured them with a line. Uprooting all the seed's descendants refers to Mashiach, about whom the Torah states, he will rule from sea to sea. This is from Zechariah. Next sentence, Edom, Asaph's descendants will be possessed. This refers to David, as the Torah states, Edom became servants of David. And this is from Shmuel. And the last sentence of this paragraph, it says, Seir, Asaph's extended family, will become in the inheritance. And this refers to Mashiach. As the Torah states, quote, saviors will ascend from Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Asaph. And this is from Avadia. So we're seeing here that as the Rambam cites Bilam's prophecy, it's demonstrating that Mashiach will succeed David Amela. And of course, returning the Davidic kingdom, but it's not like going to stop where David Amalek stopped. It's going to take it to the whole new level. And these points are made out by the way Bilaam's prophecy is all about. Um, and so we'll see the link. And through this, we can decode uh, like uh, the entire prophecy. And the Rebbe was approached in learning this, you know, um, helps us realize that every word in, that is stated is not superfluous. If, there, if there's a word there that's a little different, like one is a star and the other is a staff. And so it's not like poetic and oh, I'll just say star now and I'll say staff. You know, if there's something real and deep there that we're going to like tap into to understand what's going to unfold, which actually is very exciting um, to know because we need such good news. Like, like we've been having such a year that we really need to hear like what's about to happen. Please God, like today. Um, so, so now we're gonna see. The Rebbe explains that of these four categories, um, there's a, a critical stage on the road to our universal redemption. Uh, under the Mashiach's influence, every human being will embrace God's readily and enthusiastically. Um, it, it, yeah, it's been a bit of a long process and we're getting there and uh, the time has arrived. Hopefully we can really open our eyes and see with our eyes the, the actual ultimate redemption. And um, so Mashiach has started the process by first of all, working on himself working with the Jewish people. And finally, please God, like, you know, influence and affect the whole of humanity. And definitely Mashiach is picking up where David Amalek left off. And if you see, the Rebbe is gonna actually talk about like what makes Mashiach authentic and like for real, like the real deal. And, and I'm gonna read you here as it states, if a king will arise from the house of David, who like David, his ancestor will diligently contemplate the Torah and observe its mitzvahs as prescribed by the written and oral Torah and will compel all of Israel to walk in the ways of the Torah and rectify any breaches in its observance 
If he will fight the wars of Hashem, he may be assumed to be Mashiach. If he succeeds in the above, conquers all the nations around him, builds the Beit HaMikdash in its proper place, and gathers the dispersed of all of Israel, he is definitely Mashiach. He will then rectify the entire world, motivating all of the nations to serve Hashem together. As the Torah states, I will transform the peoples to a purer language, that they will all call upon the name of Hashem and serve him with one purpose. So if we read this, we see there's four criteria. What needs to be met for the Mashiach to be the Mashiach? Rock Mashiach, you know that song? Rock Mashiach. Yeah, that's amazing. I, every time I like something goes like challenging and I'm like, Rock Mashiach, like it's only the Mashiach energy and the miracles that are going to really help us through this day um, so we can have more Mashiach mindsets. So, again, here are the four categories to be diligent, like a, a diligent student of Torah and a meticulous observer of mitzvah. Two, to persuade Jews to return to the path of Torah and mitzvahs. Three, defeat the nations of the world who seek to prevent this. And four, to rectify the entire world and motivate all the nations of the world to serve God. And is this referring to those specific? Yes. Oh, okay. Like th this is going to what we just read over here, the, par the paragraph yes. before. Mm -hmm. It's in concise form. This is what needs to be done to really know that this is going to be Mashiach. Um, so we're going to now break it down a little deeper. Um, so if Mashiach is meant to restore the Torah, uh, he must be diligent in, in the study of Torah and, and meticulous in the observance. Um, well, there's many Torah scholars that are very diligent and scrupulous. Um, but Mashiach also needs to have a positive influence on others, to teach, to cajole, to inspire, to persuade the Jewish people to embrace the Shem with such dazzling love um, that like, just allures uh, like, the world uh, uh, to, like, from the pedestrian to uh, you know, all walks of life and all nations to, to, to follow Hashem's will. Um, and there are many Jewish leaders who work diligently to teach and inspire their fellows. But to be Mashiach, his influence must be felt throughout the world. Um, you know, today with this, what's going on, even in Israel with the government and this government and that government, like, can't we just wait to like, you know, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like, it's not gotta work so right. I know it's like amazing how they keep like trying. It's like, like, can we open our eyes and see this is the real, like, you know, MS of, of the what's what's going to really be the uh, healer, the real government. The, yeah, <laughs> the real government. So, so Mashiach will compel the nations of the world to not only support the Jews as we built the Beit Hamikdash um, and support us going back to Eretz Yisrael, which honestly. Like, didn't we all feel it when Trump was like, the capital city is going to be in Yerushalayim? I just like really thought like, how many years I'm on the planet of the earth? I was beaming like that, that, that gate. I felt like the, the prophecy is unfolding. It was so intense for me. And I just really thought like, it must be like a, for sure part of this whole process. Um, and even when he took, you know, Rubashkin out of jail. That was like even was, before, which was on Yutis Kislev. That was like, I don't know. I, I, we were actually on the airplane and we landed to such good news and we had just left Israel. Oh, My yeah. son had been married in Israel and it was just like, just like to, part, to, to feel the care, you know, of the other, you know, nations of the world when how many years, like how many years I've studied the history of the Jewish people when I made Aliyah and just constantly like the journeys that we have gone through and, and to hear this was just like ding, 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 like around the corner. This is like another step closer to Mashiach. So, so here we're hearing governments are going to be on our side. Um, if he does this, he's certainly Mashiach. But is, if his job is uh, you know, doing all the above, but his job is not over yet. Um, definitely compelling the nations to embrace God means that, uh, that it seems like it's almost against their will. 
But once the teachings of Mashiach will, will take root uh, and this Mashiach-like atmosphere prevails, um, it's definitely going to make such an impact and uh, an enable impression on all of humanity. He's, the Mashiach will create an environment that will be in sync with godliness, that the nations will be moved on their own free will. Like how many times people say, oh, I mean, is this going to go? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? Like, first of all, what you think and what your reality is and what your vision of what Mashiach is, is going to really bring everything that we're talking about here in a good and in a holy and a very productive and positive way and like because why we always say why fear the unknown it's just really not healthy the world is shaking up and things are happening and if we're going to put our mindset to this negative thing we're just feeding into it and then we're we're losing the mashiach moment today you know what i'm saying like i always say like don't fret about the future because the future may not unfold the way you're fretting it may you know and you'll deal with it when it comes but why waste your time now when it might not be that it's just not good and the rebbe told us the decision of this this like the this, this stage that we're in right now is the the horror off from the rebbe is to be besim and it was stated clearly that that's going to bring Mashiach. That's the last kick. That's the last service of Hashem. And yes, as you know, the sentence, Ivdu et Hashem b'simcha, which means not so easy to be b'simcha. Ivdu means, you know, work. <laughs> it takes work to like change your gallus mindset to a very ge'uladik mindset. And why not enjoy the party? Like, you know, okay, so, you know, like, why not enjoy the day, like a party, like, and, and like, you know, when you're anticipating a party and like, oh my gosh, you're about to hopefully get married or your children get married and you're just like in beaming joy. Like it's just about to unfold this amazing, miraculous moment. And so that the more we're happy here, first of all, that was our hurrah to bring Mashiach to this ultimate, you know, revelation. So, so how much more so if we're enthusiastic and have this amazing mindset that it's it's going to be in such an incredible way that they're they're not going to be coerced they're going to be persuaded by the impact of god's knowledge that the mashiach is bringing to them so so, so how do these connect to those those um, verses okay. because the first one says he has to be a torah scholar um, if you look, we'll go back. Oh, here we are. I might move my place. So if you see... Oh, no, the, this paragraph right here. If a king will arise from the house of David. So through this, we're seeing that there, you know, we're, that we go through these different aspects of what is the Mashiach? Yeah, but are we explaining these things? No, this, this one. Oh, oh okay, yeah. so then what happened to these? We're gonna get to it, we're, uh, we're gonna dissect it, yeah. Okay. So, so these four criteria that we just stated um, uh, sh shows from studying the Rambam um, that, that these, four things are the criteria uh now most people might not catch the significance that they break down into four parts but the rebbe actually looks at this like a road sign that points back to Bilam's prophecy which included these four stages so let's look at it together um so Bilam says i see it but not now and we said it refers to david um and this refers to Mashiach as someone who has virtue and scholarship and their diligence and their and and their scrupulous. And he could see them in the future. When Bill proclaimed a star has gone on from Yaakov, this refers to David Amalek. And a staff will arise from Israel, this refers to Mashiach. So when you look at a 
the symbolism of a star. Remember we were saying earlier, it's not poetic. It's not saying one is a star and one is a star. There's a message here. The star, you know, if you look at a star, it's like, you know, you're looking higher, you're, you're looking for better, uh, higher achievements. And, and it's like a bit different than a staff, which is a ruler. So yes, during the time of, of David Amelech, he was like a star and he did influence, but it wasn't full leadership. There was still people who wanted to get against us. There was still wars. There was still, it wasn't a full complete like victory of the people. Um, so, so like we had said, uh, in reference to the staff, that's Mashiach who will rule over Israel um, and lead and, 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 and inspire the Jewish people. And when, when Bilam prophesies the word crush Moab's princesses, this refers to David because um, crushing is a little different, you know, although yes, David and Mel fought many wars against Israel, but neighboring tribes, uh, you know, could actually, you know, be against the Jewish people, which they were. And, and, and so it wasn't a complete like turnover of these people. It was a crushing. But the person who's crushed can get back up and then again try to fight, and which happened to our people. We see it. It wasn't eradicated completely. So when Bilam concludes, Adam will be, um, oh, sorry. But, but back to Mashiach, he will use his compelling force to silence all the oppositions uh, and ensure universal compliance with his ideals. So, um, so we see on the third one, how that is related to, to, to such a difference. The fourth one, Bilam concluded, Adam will be possessed, referring to David the Melech. Um, but when it talks about Mashiach, it says he was talking about the nations embracing God out of God's goodwill. So, um, so. Mashiach is going to help all the people of the world subscribe to the Jewish mindset and serve Hashem willingly. Um, because it, it, it's not going to be like a temporary thing and then bounce back out and, and like, you know, hunt us down. It's going to like be a complete, complete embrace of Hashem. So that's why if you see why Rambam analyzes all these four different aspects of Bilam's prophecy, um, you'll see, you know, each time one sentence is in referring in reference to David Amela. And then each time it goes into, yeah, David was this, but Moshiach, you know, will succeed him in, in so many greater ways. Um, and bringing really, you know, a forever change and never to have a situation where it's not just crushed, but it's like uh, eradicated and transformed completely. So, um, so again, the emphasis is that not only will Mashiach restore uh, David Amelech's accomplishments, but supersede on them and improve on them. So we have a lot to be excited about. So, um, so yeah, we've been waiting so many thousands of years and surely the era of Mashiach is really the pinnacle as we stated in the beginning of the class of, of creation. And, uh, we're looking forward to like, you know, superseding everything that was once with the Davidic, uh, dynasty. And Mashiach can't afford to merely repeat what David Amalek did. He will need to improve upon it and in a resounding way that all of his, uh, his achievements will remain forever. Like, it's not like, you know, we can't have anything else after how many thousands of years. We're like, you know, I feel like we're putting our feet down, putting a circle around us. We're going to study this. We're not going to budge. Like Mashiach will actually um, bring all these amazing miracles. Um, so uh, the Rebbe continues and, and shows how David Amalek will supersede um, uh, David, because again, 
it says here that David is uh, described as a star. And this, although it implies exaltedness over ordinary people, Mashiach is described as a ruler, uh, a king who rules in, uh, uh, dominantly. And this is expressed through the Mashiach's ability to compel Israel to walk in the ways of Torah and rectify its breaches. Um, so, yeah, we want more than just uh, what was. We are really looking forward to a lot more. And as Rat Hashem, we could find ways to like really help it penetrate our hearts and our mind, and that we could really um, follow uh, a lead here. Um, so we don't want just the crushing, we want the uprooting, we want the complete transformation of all of the nations of the world, and it's going to happen with their will. It's not going to be coerced, it's going to be through persuasion and through the godliness that will be revealed. What does it mean crushing? Um, crushed means like, let's say you, have you ever seen like one of those like spongy bombs and you like crush it? No, but I'm saying so. And, and as soon as you let go, oh, it bounces back. Have you ever seen those like balls? Um, you put it. So crush means it's like it, 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 it's your. It's not like a forever. Like the evil defeated. Yes. Yeah. Um, uprooted is something like it's like you can crush, let's say, a little flower, but then the seeds are still there and the roots are still, and there'll be another flower growing in a good way. You know, but a brood of flower and take all its roots, then it's gone. It's gone. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're looking forward to the, the real deal done, like okay. no more. <laughs> Please, the benchmark of Mashiach is that it's going to rectify the whole world. Um, and they will all freely acknowledge Hashem's wisdom and Hashem uh, as king of all kings. Um, and yeah, David Amel did achieve that to some degree, but. Mashiach will outpace him. Um, so, so let's see again. What will Mashiach do? What are the two things that Mashiach will do better than David Amela? Um, okay, so David Amela swayed the nations to serve him, and definitely they had a relationship th uh, to Hashem through God, uh, through David. But it wasn't really a direct. It was like it was like through David kind of being the conduit of God. Um, Mashiach will establish Hashem as king of the world and they will submit directly to God. There won't be this intermediary. So that's one. Two, David Amelach only hailed sway over a small group of people compared to Mashiach who will sway over the entire world, who will like um, really hold sway like in, in, a, in, a, in a strong and deep way. Um, wow, there's just going to be such an atmosphere so holy and compelling that the entire world, not only the Jews, but everyone will be inspired to embrace Hashem utterly and completely. You know how so many times you have different relatives, different situations, and everyone has their views, and everyone this and that. I mean, and you're just like, okay, you know, you're listening and you just can't wait to like, it'll be clear. Like, we don't have to, we don't have to it'll happen. It's just going to be organic. It's just going to happen. There's just, it's just, huh, this is like, I can't wait. Oh my gosh. Imagine total allegiance to Hashem to, to be completely responsive to Hashem's will. Wow. And to be able to restore the Torah. And not only will we have this restoration of being able to like perform all of the 613 mitzvahs, um, but we will actually um, uh, be able to, you know, see the efforts of everything that we did, like, and like all the, like the dots, you know, what, you ever heard like someone say about that needle point and you look at the opposite and it looks like a mess. And then like, finally you turn it around and like, you say, ah, <laughs> now I see all the connections. Like we're going to see all the connections of everything and connect to every neshama uh, and every, every holy soul that ever was. It's just going to be such a reunion. Um, I recently, uh, this year during COVID, we had a, 
I don't know, I guess maybe a 40 year reunion on Zoom from my class uh -huh. in uh, Yavne Hebrew Academy. And it was such an intense, holy moment. Like, I'm, like it's like 40 years plus, like some of that. It's like, like the, the reconnection and the, the, I don't know, like I can only imagine if I felt that like, sensation <laughs> like i can't even imagine being out after all of what we've studied of all our chachamim and sadikim and to be able to you know connect with our mashiach in that way can i just clarify yeah so you said david Anal was the one who like he influenced the other nations to, to yeah but not like the whole world it was like uh, he crushed them in a way that it was defeated for now right and they still existed but okay the seed completely up, up, gone forever, never come back. Yeah. Um, the generation has tried to destroy it. Still, so they could be able to get destroyed. Right. Never it's so it's, it's, it. And it's like, it's so silly. What we do. <laughs> so, Bezrat so, Hashem, you know, here are the key points of what we're studying this about. And, um, and whatever we're going to study for the future, let's start now. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's let's not be behind on the bandwagon. So Mashiach's ultimate goal would be for every um, sentient being to recognize and embrace the one God. Accordingly, Mashiach will outpace even the achievements of David Amela, um, whom he will succeed. David Amel inspired the Jews and enabled them to fulfill all the mitzvahs. Mashiach will inspire them to even greater heights. David Amal was victorious over the neighboring nations. Mashiach will bend the entire globe to Hashem's will. David Amal helped Israel's neighboring nations to see the light of Torah. Mashiach will inspire a global movement as well as all of the people will embrace and worship Hashem. So I want to say, you know, when I was starting to study Hasidus, um, and I remember learning like this whole concept of you know um up in shemaim okay like forces could not get along like there was like this force of chesed and the force which is kindness and the force of gura which is the force of self-discipline and it just up there there could not exist two opposing energies so Hashem gave us the Torah down here so that we can make what was up there impossible to do. The Torah helps us because, you know, like when you think about the Torah, you think of things that are like beyond your mind. It doesn't, it's like, it's so beyond you, but, and it's like almost opposite of what you would think like that should be, you know, um, a simple thing like give tzedakah, right? Like you think, wait a minute, I don't have money in my bank and like money's coming in and I don't know if I'm going to make it the next month, but it says that I have to give like 10 to 15, maybe even 20% of my money. Like, that doesn't make sense. That's like, it's, it, it's so opposite almost of what one would think, right? And then we're like bending our mindset to like go beyond ourselves. We're accomplishing something that could not be done up there. When we think about people, okay, and Bezrat Hashem, we should have more Avas Chinam, because that's another key. Simcha is the key to bring Mashiach, and Avas Chinam is the key to bring Mashiach. And when we think, like, we're a certain personality, we might be the Hillel type. We're more lenient, and, you know, we take the more lenient route on certain things, and we have a more, like, I don't know, a view of, 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 of how to approach different aspects of Judaism and, you know, and another person is very gordic. They are so strict and they are not, let's say, as kind and as open-hearted and as giving, whatever it is. And in the way they view Judaism, it's more restrictive and, and, and constricted and, and, you know, and each path, Hill and Shammai, each one is born, actually, if you read in Tanya, with the inclination toward one path or the other and it's not their fault they were born with more chesed or this one was more born like shamai with gavura and even if you notice like some people 
when I learned this, it's kind of funny, but it, it, it kind of makes sense. People who love more sweet food, that's because they are more chesedic. They have built in them this chesed. And people who like spicy food is because they have more gvor. So like, there's so many things that like are opposites in the world in relationships to how we, you know, um, interact with people. So we have to realize that when we try our best to accept the other, even though they're opposite us, then we're doing something that up in Shemaim could not be accomplished. Chesed and Gavor could not get along up in Shemaim. They like crashed. And that's why like all the sparks came down here. And so let's say someone Gavordic has their sparks and uh, someone Chesedic has their spark. And when we have Avis too strong, even though it might be hard for us because they're like so opposite us, and that kind of happens in relationships, right? And, and sometimes the closest people to us can, you know, trigger within us or, oh, that word is not, uh, I just, <laughs> interesting. I just heard, heard from someone and she might be listening to it. I don't know, maybe because we had the conversation and, you know, that may uh, arouse some kind of interesting feeling of uh, challenge. So like when we do that, we're accomplishing the Avas Yisrael that we were meant to be accomplishing in this world, which couldn't be accomplished up in Shemai. And when the forces of unity unite, then, then more and more of our mission and our accomplishment is, is, is taking place for us to be able to pass in the redemption. And um, I, I wanted to say to you that you know, when I, when I was reading this, I was thinking of like everything that Mashiach is trying to do. We've been actually programmed in our Chabad dynasty to follow the Mashiach lead. Like, you know, the, all since the time of the Baal Shem Tov, right? When is going to Mashiach come? When we start acting like Mashiach and becoming more Torah minded, becoming more meticulous and scrupulous in our observance, when we go and do Mifzayim and, and affect the world and bring the Torah light to others, right? So we're doing the Mashiach work. We, the Mashiach in us, is helping that process of allowing the door to open to the ultimate redemption. And I remember learning one of the Rebbe Sichas on Pirkei Avot, Oilahem. There's a voice coming up from Shemaim and saying, Oilahem, like that those who are not Oisik Batara. And it says it's like a pig who has a golden ring and like he's just rolling in the, not noticing and not paying attention that he has such a, like a valuable item. And like, so the Rebbe like analyzes this and, and gives us a horror of, of the, by understanding each particular sentence of this Pirkei Avot, what is our mission here on earth? First of all, why Oilehem? Oilehem and, and why Oisek? Oisek, you would think Oilehem that are not studying Torah and the word for studying is Oilehem would be, oh yeah, yeah, you're not studying Torah. You're not Loimed Torah. So this is again, a sign that's not for those who study Torah. It's it's those who are not making Torah their business. Like if you have a business and you have some good wares, what are you going to do? You're just going to sit there and say, oh, well, if someone knocks on my door, I'll sell it. No, you have something, a commodity. It's worth so much. You will find the hottest spot in town, Manhattan, and you will put your wares there. You will make billboards. You will do advertisement. You will do what it would take to sell those wares. So if a person is understanding that, that this, this voice from, a, from the Har Cherev actually, and the reason why it says Cherev is because the word Cherev has to do with the word Laharchiv, meaning to like expand, like to bring the light of Torah, to take Torah like a business and bring it to all the four corners of the world and to spread it. And like a sword, Cherev is also a sword, we will actually have the power to chop down the darkness. 
and bring the light of Torah. As they say, you don't fight darkness with a stick. There's no reality to the darkness. All you have to do is turn on the light. So we need to take the light of Torah and be Mashiach-like and do what he does to affect the whole world. And that's why it says that, um, that like we don't want to be like the pig that doesn't know that he has a golden ring in his nose. We have to be aware, this is a powerhouse remedy. This is a healing remedy. This is um, uh, like a must in all corners of the world, including in, and I always say, putting God and Torah in every part of your life, including in therapy, including in healing, whatever aspect of healing, whether it's you know medical, not medical, emotional, mental, everything across the board. And we got to get this out to the world. That's why if you see in when Har Sinai took place and it says Matan Torah, because we're supposed to Matan. We're supposed to give it to others. That's the whole point. And if you notice the journey, since we just went through the journey of, you know, uh, Shavuot, um, they were like there for like very little time. <laughs> and the next thing they were off. You would think such a, kind of plastic event so profound so meditative so like beyond you think like they would stay there commune absorb ah you know stay linger but they were commanded right after like to leave because the job of receiving the torah is to give the torah and that's our job to be the lamp lighters to, to be a mashiach light entity in the world and to really understand the power of who you really are because it's very easy you know to feel well who am i <laughs> like uh, you know like i'm just an ordinary person i don't have what it takes i might be a shy one i might be i might be you know let me tell you, you take your baby steps and you do, as the Rebbe says, you know Aleph, you teach Aleph. And then all of a sudden, not only do you know Aleph through tough in like a miraculous way, like it's like, I remember learning that by, by sharing knowledge of Torah, you tap into such a Mashiach light and a Mashiach wisdom because through speech, you're uniting your Chochma Bin and Das with Hashem's Chochma Bin and Das. You're teaching Torah, like you're being that conduit to Torah. By speaking it, Hashem gives you more than even you were born with or capable of. You rise above your limited intellect that God even gave you, like Rabbi Akiva and right Rambam. You know, you know the stories of Rambam, actually. He, there's a discrepancy when I was writing one of my books and the story of the whole story of this light of the menorah and the whole symbolism is you use your little oil and Hashem will give you more. Well, Rambam, some say, was basically uh, maybe ADHD as it were. Like he could not sit in school and he was constantly running out of school and he was constantly having challenges with his, his parents in the sense of like... Um, Wanting, he wanted so much that they would be proud of him. He constantly felt like lowly of himself, and and look where he got to, you know. Uh, and also Rabbi Akiva. So we cannot like underestimate the power of sharing Torah knowledge and how not only healing it is for you, because when you share it, first of all, it makes it more yours. And then your light of Mashiach and your light of power comes ignited, but um, but you're gifted extra more. And the altar Rebbe actually says in Tanya, like if you give a poor person money, you think you're doing them a favor, like you're getting a merit. So the same way you think you're giving Torah knowledge to someone poor minded or doesn't know it like you know, you think you're doing them a favor. Well, yeah, but you can't imagine the favor that you're getting for doing it because i can tell you i'll tell you my private story it was like really like like and then i remember learning it later in time and it really hit me 
I was learning the Tanya of the day. It was a new, you know, newly uh, learning Tanya at that point. And I was just like, no, it didn't make sense. Uh, my um, guest for Shabbos came down and said, oh, you're learning Tanya? Let's learn it together. Like, I didn't really understand it. Like, okay, I'll try. <laughs> okay, I do. Oh my God, God, I'm in the spot now. No running around, uh, you know. Oh, I gotta go. Like, she's my guest, she's in my home. And I started reading it. And as I was saying it, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I saw no an understanding of it that came from just having the chlata to share it with her. And that has been really like so much in my life where, uh, you know, cause at first I was, uh, we were in Great Neck at one point and my rabbi, Rabbi Kaczynski of, of Great Neck, you know, heard that in Israel, like, you know, that I was, learning with a group of women it's a whole long story she kind of forced me in a way and I felt bad she's about two but she wants me to learn with her and I'm like no and so my husband's like keep telling me learn Tanya and Hasidus you're a therapist it's it's like the recipe for healing so like he and she and okay again and 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 like again like if when I was learning about myself it was like Chinese and Japanese all together uh, and not making sense and then all of a sudden I'm sitting there and it's kind of a little making more sense and I was thinking oh it's one thing to like kind of fool you know Israelis I'm like transcribing the Hebrew English to Hebrew or my Hebrew is not so good so my rabbi I heard from my husband I'm teaching it there why not here and I'm like oh it's another thing to fool like people who speak English <laughs> like not fool but like you know wing it and um and then like, again, I started understanding it more, you know, and here I am like now teaching it here and teaching it there. It's like, I didn't plan for this, you know, but there was a need and I crushed my ego and said, it's okay if I don't, I'm not a know-it-all and I'm not going to leave so perfectly say it because like, you know, my English is not like perfect or, you know, whatever. And it started like an incredible, like, transformation of my brain because my brain sorry um was just all over the place i mean i, I think i said last week i might have been like the adhd person <laughs> if I, back in those days you know um it, it like many times i felt like i had like 24 7 different radio stations <laughs> like two or three like going on at the same time it was hard for me to focus hard for me to like really learn um, it was, it took me a lot of energy and effort to memorize things like, oh my gosh, like not easy for me. And the more I did it, the more I shared it, the more the Mashiach light of Hashem's wisdom um, it came my way. And it, it did change my brain. And we've maybe, some of you have heard some of my teachings on the brain research of people who pray and learn that it really physically changes your brain. They did research where they took pictures of people who prayed, who learn, and it does something to your physical brain. You know, laser light does something, you know, they're having success, but the light of Mashiach, I mean, my goodness, how can compare what it can, get, can accomplish? So we have to get excited about this power and we have to not just keep it for ourselves. We got to do what it takes in baby ways, step by step, you know, in a unique and, and, and in a way that you're comfortable with to start sharing the Mashiach light, because then not only is it ours more, but, um, but it, you know, Torah learning is compared to many different things in our, in our Hasidic uh, uh, teachings in Lukate Torah, that's where we bring so many, and in Tanya, like the Torah is like wine, Wine takes out the, like our secrets, right? So in our heart, there's so many secrets, like the power of our love, the power of our kindness, the power of our patience, the power of all of these like enormous soul powers. And Torah acts like a wine that it brings out those secrets. Torah also is a wine because it's like, I don't really drink wine i'm allergic but so i see people drinking wine and they're just happier you know so like i get happy seeing them happy but like you're already, you're already so happy right, <laughs> right, right. so like the it, it, learning torah regularly makes you so happy there's a joy that you tap into that um comes even at a greater level when you 
learn the Pnimi of the Torah and when you're sharing the Pnimi of the Torah. Um, Torah is also described as milk. Milk, well, so they say makes your teeth white. So I, I think uh, we all have heard that. I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not a scientist, but it actually is written that way in Lucate Torah. So maybe we should all drink more wine and wine and <laughs> milk. So like we'll, 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 uh, our teeth will be shining white and not have to go to the dentist every time and do those things that people do to whiten their teeth. But the idea is that the whitening, what is whitening that milk does? It whitens our, like our midot. So we have a little anger, sometimes we have a little anxiety and we have a little doubt and all these like midot that, that get like washed away from the whiteness of the Torah. Um, we know that Torah is likened to bread. Bread is nourishing, sustenance. Like in Tanya it says that mitzvahs are garments of the soul. And like garments beautify you, and like garments protect you, but garments are on the outside. Learning Torah is like garments for your soul, meaning it's going to bring out the beauty in you and all the secret goody goody things that you have down in there. <laughs> but it's also going to nourish you like bread. It, it's ingested, it becomes your heart. Like bread becomes all your muscles and all your sinews and all your brain, uh, like pathways and all these different things. So, as the Torah teaches us, and that his Torah will be a chelik. It's going to be my heart. It's going to be my mind. It's going to be my love. It's going to be all the parts of my body physically, nourishing my body to be able to be the best that I can be. Sustaining me, as we said last week's class, not only for now, like everything that we're gaining from learning Torah today is for the future too. Because just like bread nourishes now, well, you eat it and then I don't know how many hours later you're hungry, like drat, like I have to eat again, like, oh my gosh, get out of my schedule and try to find something to eat. This food that we're ingesting of Torah is going to sustain us and recreate us and give us nourishment, not only in Olam Abba, meaning when we're in heaven, until Mashiach, actual revelation, and we all have the Tzachiyas Amazing, but mamish like nourish us and shield us and um, like forevermore. So we have to be careful not to have bittel Torah. And especially in this generation, there is so much bittel Torah. And like, you know, I'm gonna soon have a campaign, hopefully, I mean, I've been wanting to do this, but like, Shmirat Halafon. You know how they have Shmirat HaLashon? Like one hour a day, like, you know, be careful not to. Okay, if you accomplish 10, like kudos to you, you try. And I know it's not gonna be easy with the phone for a full hour, but I'm gonna start a campaign where people are going to sign up and at least dedicate like 10 minutes a day where instead of looking at your phone, like you'll catch yourself at that hour maybe and you forgot, get a book and read Torah. Not be on your phone learning Torah, although amazing Google up for sure, because you're cooking, you're cleaning, and like what handy way to just click. But the time where you're not doing something else, where you really need focus attention, and I'll tell you why. It's true. I'll tell you why it's so important. Because I learned that in Tanya, it says, you know, you do Shema Yisrael, Hashem Okeinu, Hashem Achan, and you like meditate, and you're supposed to like gaze at Hashem's greatness, and it's just like, you're supposed to take that time during davening, and you're supposed to like connect to Hashem, and you're supposed to let this fire kind of start percolating of your love of Hashem. That's why it says, Ve'ahavta, after the Echad. And then it says, Ve'di Barta Bam. And that means right after you pray, and meditate, and you are on fire. I was trying to get on fire. You'll get there eventually, more and more. But that fire just now opens your heart and opens your mind. Well, why do you want your mind and heart open? Just to like experience the high of being, you know, having that bonding time with Hashem. The whole purpose is to open your heart and mind so that when you do vidi barta bam right after you pray because it means like precision here 
you know? You can do surgery, open heart surgery. You're not going to leave the surgery. You're like, oh, like in five hours, I'll, I'll like do what I have to do inside there. The whole point of davening is to open your heart and mind so the light of Mashiach's Torah will impregnate your mind and be a seed to, to have an offspring of all the good secrets of your midos and all the whiteness of your soul. So if you're not going to learn Torah right after you pray, or you're going to learn Torah like with a shear online, you're missing the key ingredient, the dibartama, speaking the words of Torah. Now, when you speak the words, when you're going to share Aleph with somebody else, you can tap into it. But the first baby step of getting this Mashiach light into your mind and into your heart is the foundation of the day in the morning right after Dhamma. And how many people like go scrolling? or rush to work and they're going to do the open heart surgery, but they're not going to finish and fill up what's needed in that part. And that's the light of Mashiach's Torah. How much more so if we can make a chlata to review like this after you daven and have that light of Mashiach already in the beginning foundation of your day. So you have more of Mashiach mindsets. Um, and I'll, I'll leave you with something that, when I read this, whoa, it made me feel like how much more so I reread it just recently because I was rushing to the hospital to be a, an instant doula because they changed the like rules that I can go into the hospital. And my mother-in-law was in Israel and she couldn't come because of the war and, and the, the tickets were postponed and she couldn't come. So I was like hired <laughs> instantly. I was on demand, uh, you know, on training doula. And I was just like, took one book. Uh, and it was going to be Shavuot. So I took my Shavuot book and then I then went ahead and I read ahead. And the next teachings was on Tisha B'Av. And what did it say there? The bloody curtains. The bloody curtains. A whole sikh of the Rebbe about why when the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, there was like bloody, I don't like this image, but oozing out of the curtains when they were slashing the curtains and the Rebbe actually said the blood represented our life force and the life force of of like basically saying had we learned more Torah our life force our blood our vitality would have been so strong that no enemies of the world could have touched even a straw of anything of the Beit Dutch. not one anything so the Rebbe said that how important it is not to do Bittal Torah. And, he, and the Rebbe explains as follows, because if you look at Bittal Torah, not to make you feel like just, I hope, excited and motivated and inspired, but Bittal Torah is worse. Now get me, when I read this, I'm like, I've, I've heard this before. I read it before, but when I see the Rebbe saying it, it's a whole nother like league of understanding. The Rebbe was saying as follows, bloodshed, idolatry, and adultery. These three things, the most hideous crimes, is not as bad put together as Bittal Torah. And he, the Rebbe explains why. The Rebbe explains that the power of learning Torah protects against all the klipas of those hideous crimes. So right. the goyim and the world, there's a lot of things going on and we're, we're seeing the, the after effects. I mean, especially recently. So if we're going through such a tough year and we're going through such anti-Semitism, I hate to say that word. The Rebbe is giving us the remedy that our learning Torah protects against even the most three hideous crimes committed against humanity. And we have the power to like, kind of like put a bubble around the world and protect it from all those energies of destruction. Yeah. Um, so like, how do we make a balance? I, I know life is all about making a balance, but like making a balance of, learning versus 
don't know, like being being like normal human beings. Oh my gosh. I tell everyone you have to get a PhD in juggling and you can sign <laughs> up because that's what we need. <laughs> we really need like um, time management skills. We need um, a little bit of like the Baal Shem Tov's glasses of seeing that what is this going to lead me to and is it worth it? Like at what expense? Like I, I right? think also I think things about the fact that, that Hashem gave us yeah. 613 mitzvahs. Well, remember, only 213 now, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, which we should, like, I now know. I feel less bad, like, when I thought, like, okay, how much I'm not doing or something. Yeah. And then it's like, if you think about it, the non-Jews, they only have seven Noah books. Like, they don't have that much. Right, but about. if you know, those seven have many different, like, you oh. know, extrapolations. Oh, so it's just maybe... Like, they, for they, them by the way, they still do yeah. have an obligation to learn because because that's part of like believing in Hashem and learning about Hashem. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, for sure. And like many women, including me, you know, that wasn't really um so understanding at the time of the Rebbe's like instruction to us women. Um, and we can go into details of that because like, you know, the, the rest of the world, they like, oh, you're not commanded to learn. You're not commanded to pray. Uh, we're commanded, like, first of all, to have Avas Hashem and Yerat Hashem and all these things. And the Rebbe says that the only way you can get that is to learn. And we have to know what to do to be a Jew. So like, don't take that ticket to paradise. Oh, well, the fact is, and if you look in the Torah, the Rebbe said, women are not commanded to get married, nor are women commanded to have a baby. Nor are women commanded to lechanet their children, nor are they commanded to not learn and pray. But the Rebbe said, we're the ones that want more to get married. We're the ones that want more. Like it's in our nature. We've been gifted that. It's not like, you know, like feminism 101. It's just like, that's the fact that we've been given certain gifts. And the Rebbe said that the reason we're not commanded, now take it like this is his example. Would you command someone to breathe? Yeah. No, we, we're not. It's organically, we're breathing. Because they weren't breathing. No, I'm saying like regular person. A regular person. Uh, oh, breathe. No, that's part of your nature and your human and your human, no. like, you know, yeah. your your human makeup. So part of the woman's human nature is not to need to be commanded because it's organic to her, just like it's organic to breathe. And the Rebbe said that even more than the men, women need to take the step forward and bring Mashiach with teaching Inyane Hasidus and Inyane Mashiach, because why? We have a softness to us. We have a warmness to us. We have, we're, we're, we need to take like the, Rebbe's teachings, like this is what we women should be doing. And that we will succeed more than the men because men have their like, you know, kind of gavurdic, maybe, you know, not as warm when they say it. Right. Why? Say that, that we all may have a logic that very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that, um, and it's interesting, he also, the Rebbe also said, if you look at the, the prophecy of, I think it was Yeshayahu and the and some famous song that we sing in the weddings, Kol Chatan Vekol Kala will be heard in the streets of Yerushalayim. And you would think that's so not Sineas. What? Hello! <laughs> right, the, you know, in the streets. And the fact is, the Rebbe says, it could have said Kol Chatan Vekala. Like Vekala. But Kol Chatan Vekol Kala, which means the voice of the man, the chatan, and the voice of the kala will be heard in the streets of Yerushalayim, which means, so contrary to, isn't kol kvuda bat prima? Like the honor of a woman, is it, is she so like hidden? It's like, you know, but we know that the, the role reversals are gonna happen and we're getting used to that role reversal and the power of a woman, of her shining light, even like when the, the, they're going to get married in the future, like usually it's the woman that goes around the man, but it's going to switch. 
it's the men because we have this uh, our 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 light and our power our, as Mashiach unfolds and as we're getting closer to that ultimate error that's why women are stepping up to the plate and are becoming more powerhouses in the world um, because of this this divine energy that's like about to switch over in a way that is unprecedented. What do you mean the, usually the woman goes around the man? Like if versus... they're standing under the chuppah. Okay. And yeah, so when they get married, the woman goes around. Oh my gosh, I went around 14 times. <laughs> Did that say something? I don't know. But like, I was so like, like just following. Oh, was, <laughs> but at least it was like, times two it was like an even number but so when mashiach comes and when the 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 man is going to stand uh i mean the woman's going to stand in the center and he's going to go encircling around her because the roles are reversing and the rebbe is preparing us now to start me meaning that um the roles are reversing yeah it's a it's a little deep um but basically in essence, her power will become more and more manifest. You know, where when you think about a man's world, right, and 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 the um, the modesty of a woman, and Sarah was in her tent, and like that's the way of the world of this world. But as we're closer and closer to Mashiach, the feminine aspect of the whole world, including every feminine aspect of one's being, as a woman will be a, like a more prominent and even higher in a sense energy than even that of a man. That the symbolism is that, and I read this in a letter of the Rebbe in the Ingress, that the symbolism of, of the, uh, the cycle of, of those circles um, will be switched to symbolize the switching of that, that powerful feminine energy that's is going to be so needed in that time period so we covered a lot i pray that now that we learn how powerful torah is and that we're here to receive and to give that it influences you um to um have more mashiach moments um you know we take five in this five in that you know let's the, the 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 vitamin of Mashiach of learning in your name Mashiach and 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 get to that place where we're bringing out the core of who we really are and really like step up to the plate of this most important position that we've been gifted with and to do something about it in our own creative way and. Um, and enjoy the ride because the more you have it every day, the more you just have like a breath to handle what's going on in the world. And and like not only you're putting the oxygen on you, you have the power to give the oxygen to the other. And we're needed. Our light is needed. And I was thinking about doing a little meditation. Oh yeah. So I'm ready to get a comfortable position. Oh. <laughs> it's been a day oh my gosh so I want to just like um, realize that like getting in the habit of micromanaging our time so that we don't have vital Torah and that we can like um, yearn and long for those Mashiach moments in our davening, in our learning. Last week we were saying like when Rosh Hashanah, the shofar blows, the Mashiach light comes into the world, which is a moichin de godless, there's amazing like intellectual powers that come to our brain when we pray. And we're drawing the Mashiach light when we pray. Like that, that what's going to be when Mashiach comes? We'll become so wise. Like we're gonna, our eyes will be open. We will understand things like never before. So, and then we learn Torah after and we draw the light of God's Mashiach light of his Torah. So I wanna have a vision. We could just take a moment here and take a deep breath. If you want, you can close your eyes. 
And uh, in psychology, they call it pairing, where we're going to take our mind to a beautiful, amazing, Ghana Eden like place. Like if you want to be in Israel at the Kotel, oh my gosh, go there, wherever you love to be. The place that was meant just for you, the place that gives you peace and tranquility, a time to like, to really just be able to focus on the ikr, why you're here, what are you here for? What are you needed for? And in this place, as you're walking in this image and this vision, you see an incredible light. It's like a light like you've never seen before. It's so beautiful. It is so, so clear. And it is so enlightening. As you get closer into this place, you get closer to this light. It feels so peaceful, this light. It makes you feel so calm. You feel so good. It feels so healing to get closer and closer to this light. All of a sudden, as you approach the source of this light, you realize it is coming from your prayer book, from your Siddur. It's like you see all the letters, each letter beaming a holy light, each letter golden, each letter with a power of its own. And you're really drawing this incredible energy and light as you begin to say the words of Tefillah. And the light begins to melt away whatever barriers, this light, this, this holy, fiery light begins to unblock to open depths of your being, connecting to the core elements of everything beautiful about you, all your holy soul powers. As you connect to the incredible experience of this light, you sense that your mind is open, you sense that your heart is open. Mission accomplish, step one. And then as you stand there in awe of having experienced such an opening, you realize there's a greater light coming from a different destination. You look everywhere, where is this light coming from? And soon you see the light greater in intensity, greater in its power, greater in its healing. And you walk toward it and there it is, the Torah. You begin to read and speak the words of this Torah and the light begins to grow in its intensity. The light begins to flow in a more intense, deep way. You feel the light you feel the peace, you feel the healing of this light. You take a moment and absorb what's happening. And here you see the vision of the aftermath of such an intense encounter with God's energy and light. You see a vision of yourself like more like you want to be. You see a vision of yourself, happy, bubbly, very Gaulidic energy. You see yourself light and free to be the best that you can be. It's amazing. You are a light. You have confidence. You are strong. You are for real. MS through and through, you walk with Jewish pride. You're ready to share the light. 
you take your shitter, you take your Torah, you walk hand in hand with God's wisdom, with God's light, ready to be that lamp lighter and share the beauty of you. You see yourself really like a walking Torah. The Mashiach light is in you and it's beaming and you're sharing it. And as you get ready to leave this place with everything with you, you say a little prayer, please Hashem, let this image, let my brain really internalize every deep vision that I just encountered right here, this amazing vision. Feel your heart calmly beating. Now you know. Now you're on the path. Feel your strong, very sturdy feet giving you the strength to go forward, march ahead with things you need to accomplish, to be a partner with Mashiach. And when you're ready, you're smiling because now you see the truth is within you. The light of Mashiach is within you and you're ready to share it. Oh my goodness. It's not going to be the same day again after this. That's so cool. Well, that was really nice. Thank you. Very it's not the shem. Just give like a whole like new perspective on it. What what what's really happening? Like why we're learning Torah? Like what is really happening? It's something crazy happening. Um, you can't even see it both right and interesting it says here um you know there's there's a idea of like you know someone's sleeping and they wake up and they realize it's a dream you know that masha like um that's what it's going to feel like eventually we're going to like really wake up to mashiach and everything's just going to feel like a dream um so just like in one moment we could wake up and like, oh, it was just a dream uh, and we return to reality. So I'm looking forward to that day. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm so happy the class is growing. I hope, uh, let's see. Well, okay. Hi, um, Hi. So I'm saying if anyone wants to share so here, let me see if I can open the lines. Wow. Hi, Tiferes. Oh, oh my gosh. Yay. Thanks to you, this is happening. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I guess wow. it was. Honey had her. Do you want to share anything? I just really love what you're saying about the Bittal Torah. That's, wow. That's really, um, I, I hear what you're saying, like, we have to just, you know, have a, a campaign to, Stop watching the news and the media for ten minutes. Yes, it's uh, you know important information. There's there's a limit to how much information that we need about all the garbage that's going on in the world, and uh, you know just learn Torah instead. Then yes, that, that, that makes sense. Like if we stop doing that, then we won't like in a certain way we might be like in creating the news by watching it versus like recreating it to a different reality by yeah. learning you Torah got and more about Mashiach. Huh. So. Exactly. So would you like to help me in the campaign? I have some really amazing people that are joining. So would you like to join? Um, I'll, I'll be in touch with you more. We're going to do a video. If anyone wants to do a video and be part of this video, and then we're going to like blast it to, to get yeah, people. Yeah, sure. I love to it. Have a phone. Yeah, it's kind of corny, but like I don't know, we can call it something else. It's, it's good because people like that idea, and right. then you like you're encouraging actually picking up a book. I'm like, right, right, mm -hmm. right. not just put it with a book, right? Actually, like, right. Yeah. Focusing on my page, that was we did that. 
Yeah, so that's a great now idea. that I publicly I, announced it here, like I really got to get it doing. But I did like we started. I talked to this person, that person. She's going to actually do the video, so we'll have a few women who are uh, willing and ready to juice it up. As a, <laughs> yeah. I can juice it there. Or I think that would be really great for like I think the Lipish movement, the the Lipish people will really love it because they're so they're they're so focused on Torah, so they were right. they will right. love this because they're always right. trying to stop with the internet stop with the you know, right support to exactly. and to do like Indian Agula type of learning hopefully I mean whatever learning not whatever but whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway. I would love to see that quote like where, where you got that from yeah I'm it's in the holiday Mamarim by the Lubavitcher Rebbe I don't know if you ever saw that dark book with the menorah like the, the way the Rambam's menorah it's the cover <gasps> every one of the holidays like Mamarim, are like you, you don't experience the holiday the same after really learning like what the deeper teachings of what's going on behind the scenes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, anyway. You can take a picture of it and put it. You that should yeah. be part of the video you're doing. I mean, obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah I um definitely it's an idea. I'm gonna show. I'll whoever wants to private message me. I'll send you the uh, the picture of the book. And wow, when I when I read that, I was like. Well, and, and if you think about it, because in order to have Avis Yisrael, like if you don't have a core light, you know, then how can you have Avis Yisrael, right? So the Torah like brings out the whiteness of you and brings out the good in you. So like, then you'll be able to love another fellow Jew like yourself because, you know, because of the power of the light of Torah. But if you don't have that, um, your yeshus, your ego, your hurt feelings, your intolerance, yeah. the way we started this class. Chesed and Gavur could not get along. If they, you know? Right, so right. when you have the Torah as like your anchor, you have just like a pregnant, like stomach has room for another. Torah mm -hmm. expands your mind to be able to incorporate another, like a pregnant woman. And like mm -hmm. who more than us have been gifted with their loins <laughs> to carry that seed of the other. So we more than anyone have that like extra Bina to, and an extra ability to learn Torah in a way that gets to the Kishka of our Neshama that allows us to have more and more Avas Yisrael. And, and we are the lamplighters and we, we need to step up to our plate and wear a royal crown and do what we have to do. To bring my right up. right wow yeah like uh maybe it yeah 10 minutes a day learning about mashiach or something yes yeah and different tracks like little people might want to learn from their own books and that's okay but right but right. that the, i think the toot alt campaign has to go it has to get a little bit like it has to go to the next step now like and actually by this just this week um you know Rabbi wolf he has this program called well whatever it's like a group of like it's called Nitzach, Nitzachim, it's whatever basically there's a new Mashiach campaign that we're starting and this maybe this can be a part of it and oh for that. sure I mean I'm in touch with Rabbi Lebo, not Rabbi Ruben Wolf on other things so he knows yeah. me we did have a ton together actually yeah so maybe introduce what I said and maybe he'll be part of it Please be my messenger. Yes, I mean the basic idea is, I mean, I, I don't know who is it, Hani and and um and Chaya. Do you know Rachel um, Rachel Leah Wyman? No. Um, okay, she's not in the uh, whatever. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll so, talk. We'll talk. She's, she's been done, been doing a lot of my campaigns. One of them was um like the fifty three days of Tanya. I don't know if you were back and in, involved in that, or she did the. Uh, um the 49 spheres she was helping me do this campaign of learning the sphere every night so we did that together we did a lot of campaigns together and okay. and she helped with the same campaign by the way mm -hmm. so she's been yeah. a, a part of, you know with shuli wyman and they're not chabad so in a sense they yeah. are but we all are you know we all have yeah but the, but baruch hashem so yeah so this i'll just say the basic idea is it, who, who's there right now can i it's, it's uh, yeah, Hani it's and 
Who wants to say hi? Mushka? Mushka? Yeah. 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 Since I was a little kid, I saw you in <laughs> Camp in Osisrael, and I was like, I thought you are so cool. <laughs> I'm yeah, so we all love you. I'm Sonny's cousin. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I yeah. missed that. I didn't see your face or your name. <laughs> hi. 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 You do look familiar. What's your name? And what's I'm your name? I'm Rathy Campus. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um and Connie Connie told me about how you do like cranial sacral stuff, so I'm like really interested in that. Uh, okay. Yeah, we should definitely. Do, if you live close by, we're doing a Mashiach class on Chavez. Yeah, I'm like, so I might be in Pico, but I'll try to join. But, oh yeah, right, it's, it's, Connie yeah. too. Nice to meet you. You're so sweet. Hey, <laughs> now you're looking to know one. Hey, hi. We all hear you. We all hear you. So. Anyway, so I don't know, like you're here with us. Maybe you could bring your guitar and let's like, you know, I don't know. I always put you on the spot. You have so much to oh, look right like now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if not now. I have to tune it, but we could sing. Okay, we could sing one song you guys want. Bring well, it. let's just stop the, guitar. let me stop the recording unless okay. it's on Facebook Live. And oh, on. hi, Facebook. <laughs> 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 okay we are like giving you all our brachas out there you know uh join forces with us we'll start this campaign as soon as possible please be done we were doing okay, another 10 minutes early before shabbos oh where is it oh, oh yeah. yeah so i'll tell you can I tell basically just the basic idea just so like you know what i'm talking about so the basic no. idea of this campaign and then we'll do our song. And the basic yeah. idea of the campaign is to have um, like a, a, it's called Unite for Geula. And everyone at the same time will be learning about Mashiach and different tracks, like a litmus track. So they don't feel like, oh, the Chabad is taking over, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and the, maybe a Chabad okay. track. Yes. And a track. One thing I did, I don't know how to finish. One second. One second. And then, unless you want to broadcast this campaign too. Okay, continue. Maybe they want to hear this campaign too. Oh, Go it's ahead. still. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. to hear. So that's the basic idea, and okay. um, everyone at the same time learning with the you know learning the akula to make sure make ourselves excited. And even if anybody thinks that we don't deserve it, we do. But chida says even if we if we don't deserve it, we will merit in. The merit of our yearning for it so so, so that, i think that's that sounds like you can merge this definitely yeah yeah and then the you know that will be so beautiful like you know like you know i, I guess it's by default if you're learning torah you're not on the media right <laughs> but we were saying earlier there is a time and a place for you know like in Kohelis, yeah. there's a time yeah. and a place. You're in the kitchen all by yourself, lonely, cooking. <laughs> you put on a shear. That's great. You know, <laughs> like it's so holy. Yeah. Our, but we got to like, you know, balance. There's a time for us to be with our book and not have a distraction, ding, 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 and like learn and speak the words of Torah. Please, God. Right. Like an actual share, which is hard today. Like, you know, I was, yeah. as, as I was cleaning, I was like, oh, I guess I'm not doing that one. <laughs> so when you start doing the meditation, I'm like, okay, at least for the meditation, I'll sit down. So I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. We were, you and I PhD in juggling, right? We were all in our own way. So we got to, that's life, but yeah. Hey, it's so time. I, Juggle more safely. <laughs> yeah. So there's one other idea that, and I'll lead this oh, right into the song, I think. Problem is that um, we have to think, I, I've been recently, like really, um, this week I suddenly had this really deep inspiration to like write a thank you Hashem for the future journal, meaning like any any problem that I encounter or, or any, you know, uh, even just uh, decision that I'm, that I'm, you know, going in my head about this and that, so, instead of just going into it more and more, which is, you know, either consciously or subconsciously anxiety, you know, provoking <laughs> to just, I, I just literally like wrote out a journal. Thank you, Hashem, that I'm going to have a lot of clarity about where I need to live. Thank you, Hashem, that, I'm gonna have, that this campaign is going to be miraculously successful and I'll have all the support and all the wisdom to know how to pull it off and, you know, it's just like, thank you, Hashem, that we're gonna, that, that we will open our eyes, that 
that oh. just like the rubber said that has the Hashem has to open our eyes that he will open our eyes and we will thank you we're going to see it it's going to happen yes. and that is already like you're telling Hashem, it's like you're telling Hashem in a way that he can't say no like we're thanking him already we know he's going to do it we know Kula means everything is becomes what it should be and what it could be its potential is maximized and and manifest so just say thank you for it now because it will happen whatever you think is gonna is a problem or a challenge it's it's not for Hashem and he can and he will make everything amazing miraculous and revealed good so thank you Hashem that we'll be able to take this next level Amen. You know, Hannah made a gratitude book so that every day you can write gratitude things. So I'm going to inspire her to do what you just said. Make a book of thank you of the future good. Uh, You know, Hannah, the one who puts his Zooms together for us and makes our flyers. So she might not because it's like very late, but hopefully maybe she'll hear this and I'll tell her and she'll make a book. She made she makes like a book in a day, like like her super savvy way of doing the Torah. Uh, I mean, bringing Torah into like a quick way in these books. Amazing. Anyway, uh, everyone, uh, we're going to sign off now. Oh, do you want to do, you wanna do one song? Yes, let's do like one song. And we're going to dance the uh, uh, off the camera. Who wants to dance? The Mashiach dance. <laughs> Thank you, Yashem, okay, for, for, for the Mashiach. Yeah. Mashiach revealed. Amen. Mashiach is, thank you, Hashem, the Mashiach is revealed and he will be more revealed in the world. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Which song should we do? Do you see that from Brahma? Yeah. Okay, I'm dancing. Yeah. 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 Am Yisrael will have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. Am Yisrael will have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. Oh, hey! What's your name? You look so familiar. This is my new uh, friend, Rochelle. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. (laughs) I read a little bit of what you said about your future. Great idea. Yeah, it's so powerful. It's you like feel the joy, you know. Yeah. (laughs) Are you from Pico too? No, she actually drove a half an hour from like Long Beach. Yeah, right. I'm in there. Beach, kind of. Beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You take Torah seriously. You're like living the story. Yeah, huh? I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's really beautiful. So it's glad to be here tonight. Yeah, so we'll, hopefully we'll yeah. dance in the basement yeah. together. I'll either Good shot. Time. <laughs> <laughs> nice to I meet mean, you. You too. I'll hopefully see you soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody, do you want to sing along with me? I'm Israel, I have no fear, Mashiach will be this year. I'm Israel, I have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. We want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now. We don't want to wait. <laughs> I can't see your face. I see a little piece of hair. Hi. Oh my God. How are you? Hi. How are you? I see like your nose now. Oh my God. Are you still in LA? Oh my gosh, this is like... How are you? It's so nice to see you. Sit down, sit down. Have a seat in my office. What? Have a seat in my office. I'm just kidding. You're so cute. How are you? You're Baruch Hashem. Good, how are you? Baruch Hashem, good. Can I get your number so I can like, you know, we can... uh tap, yeah. tap. Okay, it's two and three. Four four six. Four four six. Seven five five zero. Seven five five zero. Two and three four four six seven five five zero. Yeah. 
amazing. It's so good to see you. You look amazing. You too. Oh my God. How are you? Where's Hashem? Wow. It's been yeah. probably at least five years. Really? Because I've been married for five years. So I have been in LA for a long time. Adnav is slim and good health and should not buy it. And I love you. You're so sorry. I love it. <laughs> I think sorry, you know, you're in for a good bracha. Seriously. <laughs> and what do we say? Hamis Barach, Nyevarach. <laughs> but for you, my dear, you should have such revealed brachas. Thank you, Hashem, that you're going to have miracles. You're going to see miracles, transformation within. And that will transform the world around you. And that you should see Hashem's love for you, how much he loves you. You should be aware of that. And, and that you should, you should deepen that connection to you're you're in a shama in a way that like is so so special and beautiful and you should be filled with joy and gratitude for all the miracles that he's gonna show you that he's gonna open your eyes you're gonna see such beautiful things and all the troubles are gonna be understood so you're gonna you're gonna be able to like appreciate what all the that you've been through because the miracles will be such a contradiction i mean such a contrast such a contrast, such a diametric contrast. It'll be like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so beautiful. I'm so excited for you. This is all the show I'm in. You should find your soulmate. You, should, you, you both should be in the right place and time and headspace that it should just be like melt together. In a, it should be a confidence and with... um. And with joy and with clarity, that it will just be like so, so special. It'll be worth all the waiting. You'll be like, that's why I had to wait because this special person, you had to go through, each of you had to go through your own journeys. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Hashem very soon. And listen, your person has to reflect outward to like the love. Hashem and the Jewish people have been coming married as well. So Hashem, amen, amen. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so 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 amen. Yes. Oh my gosh. I think I was at your mother made an event and I came and we were decorating that tambourines and me and you were dancing like crazy. Remember that? Uh, hey, I don't know. Okay, you guys, I, mean, there. I want to be there right now. Uh, it's, I need to be there. Awesome. I did not know <laughs> that all these awesome people were there. Rachel. So good to see you. Good job. Oh, the show is so oh my goodness. I'm here. Okay. Here. okay. okay. By the way, we're going to wow. do a retreat for three days in the mountains. And we're trying to find out what is the best way to call retreat because the Rebbe did not like the word retreat. And I have an opportunity to ask you and invite you. Kaula experience. They're not. They're not Chabad. This. Uh, this oh, uh, um, so I was invited to speak it and organize and to help try to like be part of camp. Of camp. <laughs> Relaxation camp. Uh, what? Relaxation camp. Oh, healing. relaxation. Healing. Healing workshop. Three day healing workshop. Oh, wow. That's an, can you text that to me so I don't forget? Because I'm going to be like driving. Oh, anyway, a, bash, a three day bath for the soul. I, I can't hear so well because there's so three three day bath for the soul. Three day. Can you text these ideas? I just can't hear and I might not remember it. Okay. What is this thing? It's going to be in like three months, but we're still we're starting the process of putting it together now. Okay. Yes. okay. Love you. I miss you. you. And maybe you can join. Yeah. I think it's like closer to where you live, by the way. It's like a two-hour drive from LA, I think, on the way to where you live. Oh, I'll give you the right now. I'm actually in LA right now. And I didn't see you yet. <laughs> I know I can't okay. believe it. <laughs> I better go. I better go. Oh my gosh. Still already. Hold on, let me turn this off.
Bye and, bye. And I don't say bye. bye. I just say um, shalom. See you later. <laughs> shalom. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love you, miss you. I better get going. Okay. Okay, bye. <laughs>